So we've just had a terrific discussion here in Newcastle at the uh, Conservatorium of Music. Our panel has just left the stage, but we're just going to pick up with some of the audience members, some of those who ask questions as well. Uh, we had a great question here from Maria about aged care, and you've got lived experience uh, when it comes to uh, this sector. Were you satisfied with what you heard from the Minister in particular about the, the rollout of 24-7 nursing in aged care? No. If, um, I don't know, you want me to stand up? No, um, the, the government has known about problems in the aged care as well as in health in general since the Aged Care Act was restructured, was checked, and that's 20 years ago. There was projections, there was preparation, there were all the system to be put in place and they all failed badly. So we... There was change, the, it's, it's a complex issue like the sport, like the environment, exactly the same. You, you, you see there's a crisis, you assess it, they done the data, collect the data, they collated, they went out. We're going to improve the education of the nursing staff. We are going to in, um, increase the, the, the possibility of people being left at home to work on our culture and our beliefs. So, a TAFE was granted 20 years ago, a 10 years sole individual project to, to, to bring up staff, nursing staff. The whole nursing, we realised that we changed from the old hands-on training in hospital, which I did in the 70s, to university. So suddenly everybody is carrying a clipboard and nobody's wiping bumps when they're needed. <laughs> so we had to go back. So it was decided 15 years ago, TAFE, deliver. You go in as a nursing assistant, you become an enrolled nurse, you become an advanced enrolled nurse, and you become a registered nurse. And through that, and then you can go and do medicine if you like. You can slot in at any time, and you, while you study, while you work, like the, the sport person in, in suggested, People have to do between 600 and 900 hours of clinical practice for no money. No money, zero. So of course people pull out. Well, Maria, thank you. No, no, you've made some excellent points and I know you might want to try and go and catch the minister before she leaves tonight as well. But I, no, I think you've made some very good points. We had a lot of discussion here too tonight about the energy transition and what it means for a region like this. So can I ask you, um, please stand up if, 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 you, if you wouldn't mind. Um, were you um, comforted at all by what you heard tonight about the, the transition that this region's facing? Look, I just think it's the same old thing that keeps going around. Like, we keep talking about this, that it's an issue, but then we keep going, it's the last government, it's this government. I just think we need government to start doing action. I think we talk about Newcastle and that it's an export hub, but we look at small communities like Musselbrook where the mines actually are, and we've been in the District 12 of Hunger Games for so long, we've created billions of dollars in this economy, and we keep sending it to the capital for the people that don't want our industry. It's a jobs, it's a small business. I'm a small business owner, and I think we've got to the point that we need to start looking at stuff, but the whole plan to date is literally is destroy the mining industry, and then we'll create the renewables industry. The renewables industry is not there yet. And I do think we need investment in it, but we've been held back for too long, and I just think we're going to get to the point that we keep saying that it's a right for us to export um, over to other, uh, other, other countries, but we need to start actually being able to use the same resource here. But this country, we keep destroying industries. We did it with our timber industry. We said, hey, let's stop cutting down trees and then using it in a country where we regulate and we have those laws so we can actually replant trees and regrowth. Instead, we want to turn around and go, well, let's e import timber from other nations and destroy their forests with no rules and no regulations. It's the same thing with their resource. We know at the moment with a lot of the minerals we've got that are coming from Africa and poor nations that are undeveloped and actually putting children into mines because we need the products in our, our phones, but we don't want to mine it here. And that's it's just stupidity and it's fine. So I think the common sense approach from government, it doesn't no matter which government it is, it's just not there. We keep saying what people want to hear, but what we want to see is action. We want to see development, we want to see investment, and we want to see more push, but we want the Hunter Valley to be on the top of the list. We do not want to be the Detroit of America. We are getting left behind. We can't invest, like I had to move to Newcastle just so we could have a baby in a hospital because we do not have that investment into their regions. We do not have that thing. We have a shortage of housing, and it shouldn't be happening in such a rich resource area that contributes so much money into this economy, and we keep getting left behind, and it's a joke. Well, thank you very much for that.
I want to come finally, Daniel, to you because you raised the housing issue tonight. And as I mentioned, we've had a lot of questions about what's going on with housing and, and you're, well, dealing with it at the, at the coalface. Um, from what you heard tonight, particularly from the Lord Mayor about, well, the need to give council greater money and responsibility to deal with that, would, would this help? I think we are the most over-consulted sector at the moment and it's just ridiculous and all we do is talk and talk and talk and there is no action. We've actually approached council many times about land that's vacant that can be used, about buildings that are empty that can be um, fixed up. There are corporate uh, and private funding available that p want to make a difference in this area. However, we can't, we just keep getting stonewalled every single time whenever we, you know, I will refer the, to that committee, the Affordable Housing Committee, et cetera, et cetera. It's like enough is enough. If anything, the, the fire in Surrey Hills has shown us, this is a life and death situation. People who are homeless will live anywhere that they can to get shelter. And people could have been killed in that building. So. We will, I don't want this to be a problem for my children. I want to resolve it now because we live in a great city and we have the resources available, so let's get the job done. Danielle, thank you. Look, I feel like we could keep chatting uh, all night. It's been terrific to come uh, to this region and, and hear directly from the, the very many uh, concerns and the, the direct experience that everybody has. So thank you all very much for coming tonight. You may not have got all the answers you were hoping for, but uh, hopefully it's got the conversation going. So thank you.